Welcome back to Awakened Exchanges. I'm your host, Jay Rich, and I want to thank you all so much for joining us today. It means a lot to see that you're all still listening and apparently still sharing this podcast with others. It definitely warms my heart during this typically chilly season. As for those that are just joining us, please accept my warmest welcome to the exchange. I truly value the new thoughts and energy, and you truly help this podcast and community thrive. You listeners are the most important part of this podcast, and that will never change for me. So thank you again all for being here. Please remember that if you have any suggestions for topics or guests, I do listen to the listeners, and I look forward to your email, either from our website or on Twitter, where you can contact me at Awaken Exchanges. I hope you're as excited to be here as I am to be back with you. Well, I was going to get this out to you guys on Christmas Eve, or maybe even just Christmas Day as like a gift, but <sighs> things happened. Uh, what can I say? The holiday season is busy for all of us, and uh, well, at this point I'm fairly surprised that I'm getting this out before the new year. But I miss the podcast family, and I wanted you to all know that things are moving forward still, and I plan on being back here with you guys as I can. I am still writing and doing a whole lot of other things, uh, as well as trying to get Awaken Vapes to take off and help support this podcast. But I'm looking forward to selling my house this coming spring and finding some property to start the hemp and medical grow. Uh, not quite sure where that's going to be located yet, but uh, stay tuned. Uh, here's hoping that 2022 is a better year for all of us and that we also turn the COVID corner finally. Uh, what's been going on around here lately? Well, um, not a whole lot really. More of the same, still looking for a job so that I can uh, get growing and and trying to stay afloat in the process. Um, you'd think that'd mean I'd have a fair amount of time to make more podcasts. And while technically you may be right with the time aspect, the stress of the unknown has definitely taken a toll on its motivation. I spend a lot of time just trying to make it through to the next month, focusing on the jobs and the bills and what do I have to sell at this point to stay liquid enough with trying to keep my cryptocurrencies as investments and not as in, uh, well, can you believe I had this back in the day, kids? Not that I'm going to have kids at this point, but, you know, still. It's all more of the same. Um, I, I don't get to spend a whole lot of time on my creative endeavors at this point, and I, I definitely miss that creative side. That's actually part of why I started these podcasts. You, some of you may remember if you've been listening for a while. Uh, that said, um, creating scripted content was never my goal, uh, but getting guests to commit is harder than you'd think, and it's also... Uh, harder to reach out and do things right now. People kind of got COVID burnout and then, um, yeah. And then I got COVID burnout. What can I say? So I, I'm trying to use my other artistic skills. And if you've been on my Instagram, then you know that I've also dabbled in memes and NFTs as well. And I'm hoping to expand on those kind of things in the coming months. Um, I'm also planning on updating Shadow's Instagram, who you might hear on here because she's been walking all around as I've been recording. Uh, and as you know, uh, hopefully you know, you can find her at ShadowCat420 on Instagram. And I'm going to be working on that uh, again here soon. I want to get it updated, get it current, because not only is she one of the most well-traveled cats in the country... Uh, she'll do tricks for treats on command, and i am actually um, continued her training with a few other things, and now we're working on speech via a custom AAC device. Um, she has purposefully used words, I believe, twice, and that's a lot for be this being on day four at this point. I, you can see her brain working hard on the concepts and... I'm really excited to see what comes of it. I hope you guys are too. Join us there as well as here on the exchange. I'll keep you updated. Um, anyway, is it sad that I got that excited about it? <laughs> Probably, but um, I think that it's, it's really kind of cool to give them a way um, to feel heard. You know, uh, every creature, every person 
uh, wants to be heard, and I think that um, I think they can benefit from that. So, uh, not to mention, it's a testament of how how truly intelligent our pets are, right? Anyway, what else do I have to share with you today? Well, I'm going to talk a bit about the Matrix Resurrections movie, uh, giving as few spoilers as I can, but also resetting some expectations as I think it's useful to go into it with a bit of knowledge of what you're getting yourself into. Uh, it makes the movie a little bit better, if not um, completely better, because so many people are just ragging on it right now. Um, they did kind of sell it differently in the trailer, but they had to. That's marketing. So I'll also speculate on how it links into the Matrix Awakens demo and how those both may actually fit into the Matrix NFT project that is ongoing at nifties.com. I really think it should be an interesting one for you, even if it's a bit shorter and it's still just me. Now, before we get into it, here's a brief rundown of our sponsors. First off, I want to thank all of you personally for your support. Just listening and sharing this podcast with your friends means so much to me. It gives me a reason to keep providing the best content that I can. And if you have the means and would like to contribute personally, please take a look at the Patreon page. You'll get access to exclusive content and deals. Um, as for our other sponsors, Awaken Vapes was the first of the Awaken brands and has been helping you modulate your high with CBD only, high terpene vape products since 2019. Genesis Farms has been making the highest quality medicinal RSO, among many other fantastic products, starting with the medical community back before 2010. And last but not least, the Caramel Corn Company, bringing you caramel corn the way it was meant to be. And remember, if you enjoyed this podcast, please follow us on Spotify, subscribe to us on YouTube, or follow us wherever else you're listening. And please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. I know that every podcast says it, but that's because it really does help spread the word. You can also support us on Patreon or connect with us on the social media of your choice. We are at Awakened Exchanges on Facebook and Instagram and at Awaken Exchanges on Twitter. And don't forget about Shadow at ShadowCat420 also on Instagram. All right, now stay tuned and thank you for listening to Awakened Exchanges. Genesis Farms was founded on the belief in cannabis' ability to heal. Genesis Farms is more than a brand. They're a compassionate community of like-minded individuals that generate top-quality cannabis products made with love and care. Community outreach is always on their mind, and their partnerships with Grow for Vets and Parents for Pot was just a beginning to what they hope to accomplish in the coming years. You can find their products on the best dispensary shelves across the state of Oregon. Their RSO is the most consistent quality in the state. Their tinctures are second to none. And their personal massage oil will have you and your partner both coming back for more. Find them on Facebook and Instagram and ask for them in your local dispensary today. Don't forget to listen to Sean's interview here on Awakened Exchanges. It's episode number three. The Caramel Corn Company is bringing you caramel corn the way it was meant to be. Made with premium ingredients in small, handcrafted batches and completely gluten-free. The flavors include original, roasted cashew, salted almond, mixed nut, spicy sriracha, white morsel macadamia, peanut butter, butterscotch, and my personal favorites, chocolate drizzle and raspberry caramel apple. I can't say enough about how delicious this caramel corn is. It makes a great gift any time of the year. You can find them on sale in Portland area Market of Choice locations and online again here real soon. Visit caramelcorncompany.com for more information today. Remember, buying local supports small businesses and keeps your money building your community. And last but not least, Awaken Vapes has been bringing you some of the highest quality CBD vape cartridges since ringing in the new year in 2019. 
I became passionate about cannabis after a car wreck left me with major migraines and no prescribed pills helped alleviate any of the symptoms. Having only tried cannabis a handful of times in high school and college, it was a doctor's recommendation that led me to give cannabis another try. Only then did I realize that we'd all been at least a little misled about the health benefits of this amazing plant. Despite the unexpected break because of the vape ban and then a global health crisis, the business is stronger than ever and we invite you to check out our updated website today. We are still offering our three varieties with new improved terpene formulations and enhanced flavor to go along with the custom blended terpene effect profiles. Check back at awakenvapes.com for any updates. You can always email us about wholesaling or white labeling opportunities as well. Welcome back to Awakened Exchanges. I hope that you had a wonderful holiday season thus far and that you're all looking forward to a brand new year. I thought 2021 was going to give us a break, but I'll just keep my fingers crossed that the mutations are following the normal viral progression and getting more contagious, but less virulent, burning itself out as it saturates the world. We've lost enough people and freedom to this virus already. I just hope it's not a permanent loss on that freedom side. Uh, one of those freedoms that uh, I feel we lost for a while is something that I've tried to take back over these last few weeks, and um, that's movie theaters. <laughs> I know, I know, uh, it's kind of weird to say, and they were already dying out slowly before the pandemic, but there are so many reasons why watching a movie in a theater is better than streaming it and any definition at your home, at least as it stands currently. Now, I get the argument. You can say, all right, but there's there's nobody here. I can have whatever I want. It's, you know, perfect, whatever. But that perfect actually comes with a, a number of drawbacks, okay? And I know that someday we're all going to be able to strap on our Oculus and stream VR movies right next to our friends, um, and you'd think that'd be easier right now, but it's actually harder than you'd think, uh, especially if you want to see someone next to you. You can watch a movie with somebody. You can kind of get it to sync up and do things like that, but you don't have their avatar next to you, let alone that actual person. Um, you can't just give each other sideways glances as the movie takes a weird turn. Um, yeah, you can speak to each other at least. Um, but yeah, you can't have your avatars even next to each other for the most part. So someday maybe we'll even be able to be like a, a fly on the wall of the movie verse that we're traversing through um, in the action with our friends actually by our side. Um, but we're just not at that point yet. So when you go to a theater, um, you still have to turn off your phone unless you're a fucking jackass. But you still have to... You know, try to be considerate of others. You have to stop trying to multitask and scroll through your Instagram or Facebook feed. You're in a darkened room actually watching the screen and being immersed in the sound. And while I do go to movies alone on occasions and more so now, mm -hmm. um, part of the movie going experience is being there with others. And when you're there with others, there's just nothing quite like it, all right? All right, so if you're paying attention and if the movie's doing its job, you're being absorbed right into the action. You're getting an actual experience instead of just mindlessly absorbing information from multiple screens as you sit on your couch. And let's not forget that there is nothing quite as contagious as a good laugh in a movie theater turning a half corny joke into a riotous one-liner as the room explodes into laughter along with the easiest person to amuse. Why did I stop going then? Well, it wasn't even the pandemic, uh, though the, that did actually slow it significantly. Um, I had already slowed myself. I used to go once a week with family or friends and eventually said, fuck it, I'll go by myself. Uh, but, I mean, my degree's in screenwriting, after all. I love movies. 
I've, I must, even if the degree itself has been fairly worthless. So why? What did? What made me stop going to this integral part of my growing up experience? If you lived through the 80s or 90s, chances are you know, going to the movies with friends or family was, yeah, it was just part of how you, you grew up. Um, I actually tried to get back into it as soon as I got released from prison, so I can't say that it was prison that stopped it. Uh, movies were always an escape. Now, <laughs> then, even more so. Um, but going solo was never as much fun. Um, and after I got a girlfriend again, oh joy, I could take her whenever. We could have date nights, right? But yeah, well, we did a fair amount of that, but... She wasn't as big into movies as I was, and movies are fairly expensive. If you want to see a, a movie night now, I'm talking Portland at least here, but you're talking $12 for a ticket minimum, $7 for a soda, $7 for a popcorn, both of those just to share, and then you're looking at a $40 night. That's $160 to $200 a month on a movie habit. It seems ridiculous i mean i used to go to dollar theaters with you know dollar sodas and fuck for 10 bucks i could go to a movie a week uh, i don't know matinees in portland are ten dollars a ticket now there used to actually be cheap movie days where we could get prices that were i think under seven dollars each on sundays and tuesdays here within a few miles of my house I used to go to those uh, up until the last couple of months, actually. Those finally faded away. All of these little things added up and started taking a toll. Then I lost that girlfriend and movies seemed a little bit less relevant. And then you top it off with a pandemic and theater closures. And I probably hadn't gone to see a movie in a year before Black Widow and then Shang-Chi and then Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And I kind of started getting a little bit more into it. And uh, I know that I am vaccinated and fairly healthy. I, I'm not going to talk about the rest of my vaccine status. Because what does that even mean these days is... I just... You know what I've had if you listen to the rest of this podcast. I, I just don't want to talk about the rest of it and get into any more politics about it. I have come to find out that the reactions that I had and shared with you guys, the the rapid heartbeat, uh, the the racing, uh, threading feelings that I associated with my vasovagal reactions, actually were a, I suppose, mild form of myocarditis. Um, my risks associated with the rest of it as well as my previous history, it does leave me questioning a few things. So I'm going to leave it at that. Anyway, so what changed for me? Well, the pandemic reminded me that I, I still like movies. Even if a lot of them are regurgitated stories from the past, um, the more and more I thought about it, uh, the more I started talking about it. My parents actually gave me an early Christmas gift, which turned out to be a Regal Unlimited Pass, which for here in the Portland area, $21 a month will get you into any of the Regals near us. So uh, I went to a movie that I, I wasn't that stoked about for the first time in a long time. I just wanted to go to a movie. I was curious about it. I didn't have to go, fuck, all right, is this going to be the the $40 that I spend this week? Is this going to be my entertainment budget for the next two weeks? No, I just fucking went to a movie because I could. And it would be the same price whether I went now or later. And that movie was The Green Knight. It wasn't great, okay? And if you're a normal American moviegoer, you'd probably say it sucked. I didn't think so. The unusual storytelling and cinematic experience was fascinating. I was watching the screen all the way to the end, and even though I didn't necessarily like how it ended, I thought about it and had an interesting experience that I could not have had for a cheaper price. 
especially since then I racked up more and more movies and have already more than paid for the three month subscription which they have uh, which they purchased. So it may have not been the best movie, but it rekindled some of that old spark in me that made me seek out screenwriting in the first place. Since then, I've tried to go to at least one movie a week and more when I can. Uh, last week, that movie was Matrix Resurrections, a movie that I could not wait to see and still chose to the, go to the theater over my HBO Max subscription, and I would have done so even if I had not had the Regal Unlimited Pass. That said, what an unusual experience that turned out to be. The movie itself is partially a take on the state of blockbusters today. The overstuffed action sequences, lack of new and original ideas on the screen, and the amount of regurgitated stories rebooted, remade, or retrashed from our past. I went into Matrix Resurrections with a very different idea of what I was going to see, and I think it would have been helpful to have a little more context before I had jumped straight in. So this is my attempt at giving you some of the context for this Matrix reboot, which has been taking such harsh criticisms in social media lately. Warning, there may be some spoilers ahead, but I'm trying to avoid them as much as possible. <sighs> All right, first off, I think that a fair amount of this movie is actually an argument that Lana Wachowski was having with Warner Brothers itself. As the new Agent Smith says directly to Neo, our beloved parent company, Warner Brothers, has decided to make a sequel to the trilogy. Even before last night, when I saw an article that seemed to confirm my suspicion, I was pretty sure that Lana knew that Warner Brothers was going to make another Matrix with or without her. Now, while I know Lana and Lily wrote and came up with a lot of the Matrix concepts together, by the end of Resurrections, I began to believe that the characters and dialogue were more reflective of Lana uh, than she was initially and probably currently comfortable with. A lot of people have made a big deal about the true meaning of the Matrix and or the trilogy itself. Um, I think that the work speaks for itself as just a wonderful story, but I also know that every writer, or at least every good one, is using pieces of themselves as they write that captivating story. So I believe that, in part, Lana used the character of Neo to show one side of herself, her true self striving to reach her full potential, while using Agent Smith to show that other side, that side that was trying to keep things neat and orderly, living by society's standards and controls as opposed to being herself. And that leaves Trinity as yet another piece of herself. Maybe the piece that was realized when she transitioned into Lana. The piece that we all long for. The piece we all hope completes us somehow. That love of another soul our twin flame, I suppose, if you want to use the, the new agey concept term. In my thoughts on this case, it was Larry's yearning for Lana to complete herself. Whether or not you agree with those character assessments, I just wanted you to know that I'm going to be using that basic thought process to inform some of what I'm sharing with you. So I think you should have that information as well. There's one more character that you should have an idea about before going into the movie, and that is Neil Patrick Harris's character, whom I won't name despite rampant internet speculation even before the movie came out. But what's more important about his character is what he represents, which is that, uh, I don't know, Warner Brothers and the media conglomerate as a whole, and how they're controlling the fiction, which in turn controls the population and their beliefs, keeping them in their pods, just like NPH says, just give the people what they want. Um, with those in mind, listen to their conversations closely, okay? The trilogy explicitly talks about Neo and Agent Smith being two sides of the same coin. 
I posited that that coin was Lana, then Larry's, personality arguing with itself, one wanting to be free while the other wanting to keep control. Since Neo and Smith have such conversations with themselves in the movies, I suggest re-watching them with that in mind. In Resurrections, while Neo and Smith have more of those, it's actually one conversation with Trinity that stuck out to me. In it, Trinity asks Neo if he based the Matrix video game character on himself, and he says something about it being a little too much of myself. And um, I think it's really there that my overly cavemanish brain clicked on and realized that the conversations between Neo and Trinity, probably in the original trilogy, but definitely in this movie, um, was also one of Lana with herself as well. She lays a lot of herself out there on the line again in this movie. I can imagine her having to send in dailies that Warner Brothers would approve of while making slight alterations to her story as the argument with them evolved, having to keep casting tight, using a lot of her Sense8 cast to fill in key roles. In that Sense8 project, season two was the first thing that she did apart from her sister Lily. Um, this is the second. <laughs> so it's notable that she left out Lawrence Fishburne and Hugo Weaving, both of whom have stronger Warner Brothers ties as well as other mainstream commitments. And in the end, I think it may not have been as entertaining as a movie as I'd hoped with the trailer, um, at least from my first experience. When I watched it with more awakened eyes the second time, it felt like a truly original piece of art. A conversation not just with herself, but with her audience. An argument with Warner Brothers that she got to let the fans in on. A way to subvert the Matrix from within the Matrix. When looked at in that context, I think that it is a much better and more relevant film than it's being given credit for from its very divisive reviews online. That said, I'm not going to give any more spoilers, um, but this leads me into The Matrix Awakens. If you haven't heard of it yet, this is a PS5 game demo that was built with the Unreal Engine. It blends real video footage of Keanu Reeves, which is how I hear you're supposed to actually say his name, and it is the Wachowskis, by the way, not the Wachowskis, if I, I don't think I've said that in this particular one, but I'm sure I have said it before. I heard them say their last name, and now I feel like an idiot. So Lana and Lily Wachowski, I uh, apologize if I had ever said any it any other way. Um, but Keanu, um, there's real footage of him that blends in it to a near seamless transition into the Matrix itself. From there, it goes directly into this Grand Theft Auto-like gameplay, but with these incredibly unbelievable graphics. Um, now, I believe that while this was just a demo, it is what they are working on or working towards long term. I also believe that the long-term plans involve the Matrix NFTs on nifties.com, which just so happened to be rendered with that same Unreal Engine. The nifties.com project has metaverse aspirations and is already known to be a multi-year project. On their Twitter spaces and Discord chats, they've talked openly about the fact that while the avatars are available only as an image right now, they are full 3D renders and will likely have 3D versions available. Will this be limited to the PS5 game if it comes out on that platform or others? Or are they planning a full-on invasion and going metaverse? Could you plug in your Oculus and step into your nifties.com Matrix NFT avatar? Will these be the earliest tickets and heroes of the Matrix metaverse? My, oh my, why not think big, right? It is the Matrix, after all. While the first Matrix Avatar mission, the Red Pill vs. Blue Pill Challenge, starts on January 5th, you can take the Blue Pill, 
lock in your character's rarities and get some unique attributes as well as participate in blue pill missions. Or you can take the red pill, re-roll your rarities, get unique gear and weapons, and participate as a resistance fighter. I'm incredibly happy to say that I got in on these NFTs on minting day, despite the problems that we all had, it was an overall easy experience. You can still buy yours on the secondary market at nifties.com, and I suggest getting in today while they're relatively cheap. I don't know how long that cheapness will last as the missions progress and their capabilities change. I am incredibly intrigued by the long-term aspirations of this project. And I think I've rambled enough for today, so I hope you've enjoyed it and that you found some of it informative at the very least. I also hope to see some of you on the Nifty's Marketplace and gaming platform. My username on there is Awakened One, all one word. Fits in with both brands, don't you think? <laughs> all right, now I'm Jay Rich, and thank you for listening to Awakened Exchanges. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this little holiday check-in with The Exchange. I know that 2021 sure threw me a lot of curveballs, so if you were in the same boat, here's hoping that 2022 brings good tidings to all. Last but certainly not least, I want to give a special thanks to all of our listeners. You are the reason I make these podcasts and continue to spread the word about terpenes and cannabinoids, such as those found in our own Awakened Vapes. Please tell your friends about us, follow us on Spotify, subscribe on YouTube, or wherever else you're listening, and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Every podcast says that because it really does help with visibility. You can also support us on Patreon or connect with us on the social media of your choice. We are at Awakened Exchanges on Facebook and Instagram and at Awaken Exchanges on Twitter. Thanks again for listening to Awakened Exchanges and have yourself not just a blessed day, but one amazing new year. Let's go 2022.